Scapular ringing is somewhat of a hot topic in the climbing community, and considering how hyper-focused we are on our back and shoulder muscles, it's easy to see why our scapulas have become so heavily scrutinized. Strong, mobile shoulders are absolutely essential for climbing, and the scapulas are a huge part of that system, so it can be quite concerning when we think there's an issue. On top of that, this subject can get really confusing because most of the time when people say scapular winging, what they actually mean is scapular dyskinesis. Informally, the terms are used interchangeably, but in a medical sense, that's not the case and we should know how to differentiate them. So in this video, I wanna demystify what these terms actually mean and how serious they are. I'll also provide you the tools and insight to examine your own shoulders so you can see if this is something you should be concerned about. But first, I'm gonna crush this V0. Hey. Ha. In the formal sense, scapular winging refers to a rare, often debilitating disorder. It's caused by a failure of the stabilizing tissue that keeps the scapula anchored to the rib cage or thorax, creating a prominent wing-like protrusion. This leads to significant functional limitations, including the inability to elevate the shoulder beyond about 90 degrees. Scapular dyskinesia, on the other hand, is a broad term used to describe a plethora of dysfunctional or abnormal movements of the shoulder blade. In fact, dyskinesis, the singular form of dyskinesia, literally just means bad movement. As a result, the severity of a scapular dyskinesis can range quite a bit. Notice that scapular winging is something you can see while the shoulder is static or at rest, whereas scapular dyskinesia is defined by abnormal movement. This is an important distinction because it means scapular dyskinesia cannot be properly identified by simply observing your shoulder while at rest. While static tests may lend some insight, a true diagnosis requires analysis of the scapula during movement, making things a bit more complicated. Now just for fun, I want to know, do you think it's okay for scapular winging and scapular dyskinesis to be used interchangeably by climbers, or do you think we should keep them separate? Let me know down in the comments. All right, dude, I'm gonna take off, head up to Bishop for a little bit. But, oh, you didn't wanna do the video? Or? No, no, we're good. I'm gonna go to Bishop. Gotta climb, bye. There are a lot of moving parts needed for shoulder movement. The clavicle, scapula, humerus, serratus anterior, trapezius muscles, rhomboids. And if all these structures are moving in tandem, the scapula and arm will follow a normal movement pattern. This is sometimes referred to as scapula humoral rhythm, or SHR. This rhythm is quite helpful for healthy movement of the shoulders. It helps maintain better positioning of that shallow ball and socket joint, and it improves the strength and efficiency of the surrounding muscles and the surrounding scenery. Woo, beautiful. If any of those structures in the shoulders or back malfunction, the scapulohumeral rhythm can be disrupted. Like how Jason's trip to Bishop disrupted the rhythm of this video. Hey! Or how one bad chord can ruin a song. <laughs> Muscle weakness, tears, imbalances, nerve damage, weakness in the core, and joint issues can become that bad chord. As a result, the song changes either as a direct consequence of the malfunction or as an indirect consequence of the musician trying to compensate for it. This change in rhythm can manifest in a number of ways. One example was shown in a 2020 study by Kazono et al. where they monitored shoulder movement in patients with rotator cuff tears. Among other things, they found that upward rotation in the scapula in these patients was significantly higher than in uninjured shoulders, particularly in the middle range of motion. Another example is compensation caused by weakness in the lower trapezius, which may cause issues in the upper trapezius while climbing or overhead training. This can result in a stiff neck, or shoulder pain, or maybe both. Bro. Oh. Were you recording without me? <laughs> what? <laughs> no. <laughs> nice shirt, by the way. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you think other climbers should know about this information too, maybe share it on Facebook or Instagram. To get a truly accurate evaluation, I recommend seeing a professional because identifying scapular dyskinesis and its cause is not the easiest task. But I do still think there's value in educating and examining yourself, so let's give it a try. We'll use simple shoulder flexion and a camera to observe our scapula in motion. Start with your hands by your side and thumbs pointing forward. Slowly move one arm forward and up until you have moved through the entire range of motion available to you. 
Perform multiple repetitions of this to get a good bearing on your movement. Now repeat the process on the other arm so you have something to compare to. If you think you have a subtle issue, you can try and make it more obvious by adding a small weight. Finally, with both arms by your side, retract both of your scapula as if you're trying to have the world's best posture. Now to review our footage. I'm gonna use some examples our lovely viewers sent us. If you wanna participate in videos like this, follow us on Instagram at Hooper's Beta Official. Keep in mind, some of these things are gonna be slightly harder to see if you're not as familiar with the anatomy, but we did try and choose some slightly more obvious examples to help with your learning. Number one, asymmetrical inferior angle or bottom point of the scapula. So we'll look at the left and the right. So we can see a little extra movement of that left compared to the right as we start to get through that motion. But let's see how she does, especially when she comes back down because it's slightly more obvious. So we'll see it right there. So we'll kind of go forward and back from here. So we can see everything looks pretty symmetrical, you know, at least for the most part here. And then we'll see, boom, that left inferior angle becomes much more prominent than it does on the right. Number two, increased upward rotation of the scapula. As noted by the aforementioned research paper, if there is significantly more upward rotation in one scapula compared to the other, it may be a result of a rotator cuff tear. Number three, decreased upward rotation of the scapula. The, the left arm will start to move, so we'll watch that movement there, and then pay special attention to the, the shoulder blade because it's actually not gonna move for quite a little bit. So we see our subject start to elevate the arm, the arm is still moving, the arm is still moving, the arm is still moving, the scapula still hasn't really moved at all, and then we get our first little indication, but still not a lot of movement, we're almost to about 90 degrees. And then we get a little more movement, boom, right there. He's already at like about 110 degrees of movement before we see that, that first real movement of that shoulder blade there. So really quite a great example of that delayed upward rotation of the scapula. Number four, shifting upward or shrugging of the scapula. If the shoulder shrugs up during the movement, it may be due to weakness of the lower trap, decreased kinesthetic awareness of the lower trap, or overcompensation in the upper trap. Number five, excessive scapular protraction during elevation. We can see the inferior angle and then like the medial border right here, and it's going to immediately protract, and it does it quite excessively, so you can see it immediately moves forward the moment she raises her arm, and it kind of disappears at this point now, so we're just gonna go flying through this. It reappears there, you can see that superior angle, but then let's watch it as it comes back down. So coming back down, it's quite protracted still. It's probably actually where the, the line is now. And then we'll get this out of the way so we can see all of a sudden, boom, it's gonna shift back in. So because it was so far protracted, it had to make up a lot of space at the end and really retract back at the end. Number six, inability to properly retract the scapula. Now, while I can't tell if she's getting good lower trap contribution just because of the clothing, we can see the upper trap compensation. So we can see the shoulders shrugging. So watch both shoulders as they move upwards. And you can see the increased activation of the upper trapezius muscles. So she does still get activation of the middle trap. Again, I can't see what the lower trap is gonna be doing too much. But again, if we watch, we can see here as the shoulders start in this lower position, I'm just gonna leave these lines here so you can see the height and how as she moves up, boom, both shoulders shrugging quite up above that initial resting point and over activation of the upper trapezius muscles. There are also some indicators of the scapular dyskinesis that can be seen in the static position, but just to keep this video nice and concise, we put those in the show notes. Now, before you get all worried that there might be something wrong with you, hold on. I highly recommend you do not obsess over the minutia of every joint angle, muscle activation pattern, and asymmetry in your body, even if you do show signs of dyskinesis. Why? Because it's not a big deal, bro. Well, kind of. While scapular dyskinesis is definitely something you want to address if it's causing you pain and inhibiting the function of your shoulder, mild dyskinesis is not something to worry too much about. For one thing, our bodies are so adaptable and varied that hyperanalyzing won't necessarily help you, possibly even the opposite. For example, 
you could have a three degree variation in your shoulder that's been there your whole life, but after a six day climbing trip, you start getting a bit of pain in your shoulder and only now do you notice that small variation. And as a result, you're freaking out, thinking you might have some horrible shoulder dysfunction. Sure, there might be a small issue with your shoulder that you can work on, or you just overworked your shoulders and your body is telling you to chill. Either way, it's not a death sentence, so don't let it ruin your psych. Two, as you now know, movement of the shoulder is quite complicated. And while I'm all for educating yourself on training and rehab, the reality is most people don't have the expertise or equipment to thoroughly assess themselves in this situation. Remember that Kazono study I mentioned earlier? They used radiographs and CT scans to produce 3D models of their subjects, which they then studied to obtain the results. Not exactly a simple evaluation. Of course, that level of analysis won't be necessary for most patients, but a true diagnosis will still likely require an expert with lots of experience in shoulder mechanics. If you follow my advice so far, you should have a decent idea of what's causing your scapula issues, and you should not be freaking out about it. Now you simply need to strengthen the muscles associated with the issue you identified in the diagnosis section. Here's a nifty chart to help figure that out. If you have weak shoulders in general, I recommend allocating a good part of your training to correcting that. If you think you have a more isolated weakness, then you can start by focusing on that issue specifically. We actually have a whole playlist of videos for climbing related shoulder strengthening if that's your jam. For maximal results and a more personalized experience though, I recommend contacting a PT like myself or a knowledgeable coach like our friend Dan Bell, hashtag shameless plug. And finally, if you'd like us to make a separate video specifically on how to fix scapular dyskinesis, give this video a thumbs up and leave us a comment down below. Until next time, train those scapulas so you don't even need to climb because you have awesome wings that let you send by just flying to the top of the climb. And repeat, except maybe next time with a Red Bull sponsorship. <laughs>